Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. In this video, we're going to be covering how to choose the best pool to mine on. And there's various amounts of cryptos and crypto projects out there. So I know it could be a little bit daunting, but we also want to talk about the reward system. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about the reward system, as well as my parameters, I guess you could say, as far as looking into what pool I want to mine cryptocurrency on. So the first thing I would say Everything that I'm going to go over is going to be linked in the description below. Check it out. But miningpoolstats.stream, if you're a newcomer to the crypto mining space, uh, I would highly recommend adding this website to one of your favorites. If you're an OG, you already know about this website. You can see here that we've got a number of cryptocurrencies in front of us in which we can choose any project that we're looking to mine on. For example, let's choose Ethereum. So Ethereum pools uh, will show in this list here and on the left hand side, you would see the names, but also the globe represents the, like a world server. For example, if we look over at Ethermine and we mouse over the icon, it says it has a server in the US, EU, and Asia. Spark Pool is primarily in China, so is Spider Pool. And then when we go over to Nano Pool, they have an EU, US, Asia, and Australia server. And realistically, if you're mining directly, right, like you're not using NiceHash because you won't be able to choose the pool you mine on and you won't be able to choose the currency you get paid out in. Only when you're mining directly, whether it's through Awesome Miner or Batch Files, uh, like T-Rex Miner, Phoenix Miner, so on and so forth, G Miner, you'll be able to mine directly to these pools and get paid out in the currency you want. And if you haven't checked out my video on, on how to mine Ethereum, uh, go ahead and check that out because basically the, the same steps it would be for other cryptocurrencies. You're just obviously changing the pool, uh, the wallet address, and the algo or coin that you're mining. Uh, each miner is different. But go ahead and check out that video. I have that linked in the description as well. But I've been doing a lot of how-to guides lately, and I just want to make sure that uh, a lot of the new people uh, are aware of you know choosing a good pool to mine on. For example, if I were going to choose a pool on Ethereum, I do like Ethermine.org. A lot of people do. But as miners, we have a responsibility to try to keep the network decentralized. We don't want to put all of the hash rate on one singular pool because that, that can leave it open for that crypto or that project to be attacked. It's called a 51% attack, which we've seen recently with Firo, and we actually seen uh, three times last year, uh, besides the past, on Ethereum Classic. So just make sure that you look at the percentages here on the right-hand side. So I look at the percentages, I look at the network hash rate, I look at the pools that I wanna mine on. So right now, my top two is Ethermine and Nanopool. Um, now, Nanopool is a little bit further down as far as percentage of hash rate, because you don't, you don't want to be on a pool all by yourself unless you're solo mining, which we'll get into here or I'll give you a brief description of. Realistically, if you only got one or two GPUs, you shouldn't be really solo mining unless it's a project that barely anybody's on and there's a high probability of you getting blocks. But Ethermine is a, a good choice. We can see it has 22.5% of the network hash rate and a payment system. If you look right here where it says pool fee, there's a whole bunch of letters. What do these letters mean? Well, let's go into it. Luxstore Tech um, has a, a pretty good article on medium.com, again, linked in the description. We're just gonna go over some keyword terms here and stuff like that. So keyword terms, block reward. The block reward simply refers to new coins distributed by the network to miners for each successful solved block, right? Every time you solve a block, you're gonna get a percentage of that payment um, if you're solo mining, you're going to get the whole payment. Transaction fees. Some networks like Bitcoin also have considerably uh, uh, considerable amounts of transaction fees rewarded to miners. We've seen that a lot with Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum payouts are usually around two, two, uh, two Ethereum per block. But with the high concentration in, in DeFi and amount of um, fees that are associated with a transaction, miners can wind up you know, reaping those rewards, which is why EIP-1559 is uh is something that miners aren't taking too kindly hashing power obviously that's the the hash output of a hash function hash rate is the speed in which a computer is completing an operation in the cryptocurrency code so that's the hashing of your machine kind of if you ever did um what's it called uh folding at home right you're using the computational power of your machines to solve an equation problem etc luck Luck is uh, the luck of a mining pool is probable in nature. Imagine that each miner is given a lottery ticket for a certain amount of hashing power they provide. 
If you were provided one terahash of hashing power and the overall hashing power of the network is 10 terahash, then you would receive one of 10 total lottery tickets. So there's a 10% chance or probability of, of you solving that block and getting a, a little bit extra reward for solving that block. Uh, moving forward, we have FPPS, which if I go back here, I don't think it's too many on Ether or Ethereum that has it. No, here it is right here. So Haibu Pool has FPPS. What does that mean? So FPPS is stands for full pay per share. Um, a, P, a regular PPS miner uh, is paid expected on a value from each block reward, but block reward is only part of the miner's revenue. The other part is the transaction fees, which is what I was talking about. Uh, FPPS is similar to PPS, but not only does it pay you the expected block reward, but also the transaction fees. So FPPS pays you the, uh, the percentage of the fees plus the block um, or, or your work that you dedicated to it, right? So say for example, you and me are working on the project, but I do most of the work, I should, sh I should reap most of the reward. If I do 70% and you do 30%, I'm probably gonna get 70% 70, uh, 70 of the reward of that. But if we do 50-50 or we, we get more people involved and everybody gets 10% or one person gets five, that's where it starts getting complicated. So these little fee structures that they have in place, various pools, will actually make sure that you're paid out fairly. Uh, in some cases, some are better than the other, but that's a whole different argument for a different day. Pay per last end share, or commonly known as PPLNS, is another popular payment method which offers payment to miners as a percentage of shares that they've contributed to the total share. So you get paid upon the amount of work or shares that you have submitted. And that to me is, is, is fair, but I also would like to earn the, the, uh, a profit on the fees uh, for completing said task. Uh, pay per share, which is what PPS is. PPS plus though is a hybrid of PPS and PPLNS, right? So a combination of this and regular uh, pay per share. The block reward is paid out on the expected value similar to PPS. The transaction fees plus are paid out on the PPLNS method, meaning that the pool's actual transaction fees are distributed to miners based on how much hash rate they have contributed to the overall network. And so some of these keyword terms may get a bit confusing, which is why I want to leave it in the description. If you want to continue reading this Medium article is really good from Luxor Tech. But moving on to solo mining, two miners did a really good job. And they even have a calculator here that I'm going to, again, have linked in the description that will help you out about analyzing, you know, whether it's going to be profitable for you to solo mine. I wouldn't recommend solo mining Ethereum right, right now um, or probably ever because it's gotten so big now. But there are products out there that you can solo mine on. Uh, for example, best coins for solo mining, uh, they, they have Ethereum in here, Ethereum Classic, Moac, Metaverse, Pearl, Callisto coins. If you look at the difficulty of the chart of Ethereum and Ethereum Classic compared to others, you will understand why the mining of Classic is more profitable than they are. It is always good to get some regular payments. So don't go alone for harder to use Ethereum while you just have one GPU. Again, so if you only have one, two GPUs and you're trying to solo mine Ethereum, it may not work out because you have to continuously mine until you find a block to get that payout. So it could be a long, long time to find out, all right, am I actually gonna get paid out? For example, let's say we have 13080, right? And I wanna calculate. So to mine with 13080, to mine one block will take me one year, three months, and four weeks. My total profit will actually be a whole lot less. And I didn't mean to click on that. My apologies. So my, my actual profit wouldn't be a lot if I try to rent it. I mean, my 24-hour profit's $9.27, but that's continuously mining, right? So one, one year, three months, four weeks of 24-7 mining on the 3080, and I will eventually get a block. Um, and it's to me, it's it's not worth it. You want to you if you're going to solo mine, you're going to be looking for projects uh, that have a less hash rate and that might be actually profitable. Like look at the time frame here on the right hand side. Uh, Cortex two hours fifty nine minutes and fifty one seconds. So you can do that, but look at the price of Cortex. So there's a lot of variables that you got to factor in on uh, when you're considering solo mining. But I definitely would not solo mine Ethereum. Now, if you had 
a rig, uh, let's say, let's go ahead and grab the most common, in my opinion. Let's say we got eight RX 580s from AMD. It would take us six months, three weeks and three days to solo mine uh, a, a block. Um, and that in itself is also kind of heh. But then when you look at the other coins, you know, one hour, two hours, and then the other ones, you know, go up to days and weeks and so on and so forth. Metaverse, we can get in one hour, 25 minutes. So this calculator is pretty cool if you really want to see if there's any uh, profitable coins for you to solo mine. But realistically, on the pools that are available to us, mining Ethereum, uh, Ethermine has a really good payment system with PPLNS. PPS Plus is good. PPS, uh, PPS Plus and PPS by itself is good. F. PPS is pretty good as well, but Hibook Pool doesn't have a lot of the network hash rate on it. So what's going to happen is it's going to take a while. See, the last time they found a block was two months ago. So it's going to take a while for them to get a payment if they're still mining on that pool. So a lot of people like to mine on pools that get frequent blocks. They won't get as much of a share out of that block, but they will get consistent payments. So Ethermine, any of the top few pools, um, I would stop basically around the sixth one for Ethereum. I can't tell you every single coin, but you just you just want to look at the hash rate, the fee structure, and you know if there's a server close to you. You know, obviously, if you're in Australia and Ethermine doesn't have an Australian server, then you might have to use Asia, so on and so forth. You want to be you want to be connected to a server that's the closest to you. The last payment system that I want to talk about that is not visibly here for Ethereum, but it is available for other ones. Um, is in an article from Mint Pond called Prop uh, Proportional. Proportional is the simplest reward system. Rewards come from rounds. The time between one block found by the pool and the next, you're rewarded for the shares you submit in proportion to all the shares submitted during each round. For example, if the shares you submit during a round account for 50% of the total shares, then your reward is 50% of the block reward. Uh, not too many pools use this, um, and I could be wrong about that. Let's go to Ethereum Classic. But it is out there. And you can see, look, some, some of these are solo mining. Last time they found two miners offering solo mining. Last time they found a block was 82 minutes, but I'm pretty sure they're mining Ethereum Classic with the network hash rate. Look at the difference. 7.51 terahash versus Ethereum which is, has 320 terahash. So the, the, the network hash rate isn't as profound. The difficulty isn't as high. And I'm pretty sure whoever is still mining Ethereum Classic has more than just one GPU. So just keep that all in the back of your mind. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Check out all the articles uh, that I went over in this video. A lot of good information from two miners, from this Medium article from Luxor Tech, and as well from Mint Pond's uh, own website so take the time it has the same information i was talking about but might rephrase it in a different way like pplns so on and so forth but it's very useful to notice information to help you decide on what would be the best pool for you to mine cryptocurrency on but do me a favor guys on the way out hit the like button subscribe for more content like this and again hit me up in the comments let me know what's going on let me know if you have any questions I'll be more than happy to help. I do my best to get back to your comments, but I'm not always available. So I appreciate your patience. You guys take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.